Morning everyone, welcome to this Tuesday. Uh, we're looking at the book of Matthew this week. Uh, just kind of an overview of, of the actual book and some key verses in it. It's kind of like a bit of a teaching. So when you read the Gospels, you actually know why you're reading them. Now, if you joined us yesterday, you know I spoke just about that. Matthew is the first book uh, in, in, the, in the New Testament out of all the Gospels. But why is it the first one? Well, the early church fathers put it as first. Uh, and there's a number of reasons. You know, the, the actual writing is very raw and real writing. There's, there's assumptions that it was maybe written in Aramaic first and that Matthew also translated into Greek. He was bilingual. There's a whole audience. But it's also being called the royal book. Uh, and the reason it's called that, the royal gospel, is because it's, it's written to a Jewish audience. And remember, as we said yesterday, Matthew's aim was to show a Jewish uh, recipient who would read that book that Jesus is the Messiah. And so that's why it speaks a lot of prophecy, a lot of the Jewish traditions. Uh, and right in Matthew 3, one of the, th the people that's introduced is John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist uh, created quite a stir. Uh, he was part of a group called the Essenes, we assume. They were a group that said, listen, we, we, we're tired of what's happening in Jerusalem. We're tired of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, the way that they were running things. Uh, there was too much politics. Uh, there was too much uh, uh, um, compromise in the life of the Jewish nation. And so they decided, we're going to go live out in the desert. Uh, we're going to become part of the, the Qumran co community or the Essenes. And uh, they try to live according to Scripture as best as they could. It's, it's where you may have actually heard the word Qumran scrolls or the Dead Sea Scrolls, which was a famous discovery of these scrolls, which back uh, these early manuscripts, uh, some of the earliest manuscripts that we've got uh, from all the copies. So, yeah, it's quite a lot. You can do a bit of research on that. And, uh, and I'd love to talk about these historical finds, but not today. Reading from Matthew 3, verse 7 to 12. But when, this is John the Baptist, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? And do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up the children of Abraham, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. The axe is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he'll clear the threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Uh, these words that John speaks and Matthew records are so... Uh, are, are so important in, in the scripture because John was the forerunner to the Messiah and he saw himself as that. Uh, he spoke of his role, that he's, he's there to baptize people and, and the religious leaders were even coming to him and kind of trying to test him out and see where he's going and what is he, because many people were flocking to him. And here in the scripture, Matthew records, specifically for Jewish nation, that God is doing something new. He's about to cut down everything that they've known. But look at what he says about Jesus and what he introduced. He says, Jesus will come with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He introduces that, that God's Spirit will be in us today. The Spirit which came upon um, David, uh, the Spirit which came upon Saul so many times. It was only in glimpses and, and brief moments. But he says that Jesus is going to come and he'll baptize you, not just in water for repentance, but he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come into the life of every single person that chooses to follow the Messiah. And so that's such an encouragement. And for the Jewish nation, that must have been an amazing, amazing thing to read, that the Messiah will, will be present by his Spirit inside of us. We kind of take that for granted. We have the Spirit which guides us into all truth, the Holy Spirit, who, who helps us to commune with God when we don't know what to say. That He leads and guides us. He, 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 he not taps on our shoulders, but He, he speaks into our hearts when, when we're going astray. And he, and he guides us carefully back into the way of the Father. God's Spirit will be present with us today. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
What a privilege we have. And the book of Matthew introduces the Spirit into the life of everyday believer. That's you today, being guided by God, if you will allow Him. Let me pray. Lord, just thank you for these, these writings and for a Jewish nation who didn't know the intimacy of the Spirit. It would have been so, uh, so different to, to think that, that you would walk with us, that you would guide us. We wouldn't have to go to a priest. We wouldn't have to atone for our sins through so many different ways, but it would be through you, the Messiah, and that your presence would guide us into truth, convict us, restore us. And so, Lord, thank you for the Spirit today, which leads every single one of us. I pray that we would listen and obey. In Jesus' name, amen. Hope you're enjoying this. I really get excited when we talk about the historical stuff in the book and why it's written. But Matthew, the Messiah, and now the Holy Spirit. I'll see you tomorrow as we continue.